Today we're going to learn about Flexbox. Flexbox is a great way to align content in either a horizontal or a vertical fashion. We can control a lot of aspects about the layout with CSS. To start our project, go to your file manager. Here I have a new project, Flexbox Tutorial. Inside it, I have two folders, one image folder with the cherry blossom JPEG and one CSS folder that has nothing inside. Now, inside Visual Studio Code, open your folder. We need to create a new file, index.html. Right-click, New File. Remember, type an exclamation point to get the HTML5 boilerplate. Inside the body, we're going to type some HTML. Let's create a main container. Then let's create a heading. Below the heading, let's create a section. And let's give it a class with the Emmet shortcut. Type section, period, then the class name. Inside the section, let's create three divs, each with the same class name. And let's give each of these divs their own individual class. Inside each div, add a paragraph. Save your file. Then start the live server. We have our basic HTML page with our heading and our three Flexbox items. Right now, we don't have any CSS styling, but we'll add that now. Go to your file manager. Right-click to create a new file. Make sure you move it into the CSS folder. First, we're going to type some default styles. If you're interested in why we are using these default styles, please see the previous video all about CSS. You will use these basic styles in many of your projects. In the HTML tag, we set the font size to 100% of the user's default font setting. We set the box sizing to border box and set a font family. Then we use the universal selector to make all elements inherit the box sizing. On the body, we added a top and bottom margin of zero and a right and left margin of auto to center our content. We removed any default padding and then we set a minimum height of 100 viewport units. Then we made our images responsive by making them 100% wide and auto height and display block to remove any spacing in between the images. Now we can add styling for our Flexbox containers. Now we can add a link to our style sheet in our HTML. In the H reference, type the path to your style sheet. Once you save the file, you can see the changes that have occurred. Back in the CSS file, Let's add some styling for our Flexbox containers. I'm going to move the style CSS to the side once again. So now we need to style this class Flexbox container. Remember to type a class in CSS, start with a period. We will give it a background color. You can see the background color now applied. Let's give some default styling to each of these Flexbox items. So now our Flexbox items have default styling. Now let's add individual styling for each of the items. We can copy this, then paste it twice and change the values. So now we have three items in our Flexbox container. But this looks just like we expect it to look in standard HTML and CSS. Now let's add the display flex property to the Flexbox container so we can see the power of Flexbox. Once I save this, now each of the Flexbox items are side by side. If I adjust the browser width, you can see that the container stretches, but each of them still stay where they are. And they are all the same height, whereas before they had different heights. Let's talk about what Flexbox is once again by going to the Mozilla Developer Network. 
we have a flex container, and then inside we have flex items. The flex container controls the layout and the positioning of the flex items. Items are positioned horizontally along the main axis and vertically along the cross axis. The main axis starts on the left and the cross axis starts at the top. Here is start and end, start and end. Flexbox can only display content in one direction. It can either display content in the vertical direction or in the horizontal direction. The horizontal direction is the default or row. Column is another way you can display content. If you display content with the column direction, then the main axis becomes vertical and the cross axis becomes horizontal. Let's try some of the different display methods. We can use justify content. The default is flex start. Here, nothing changes once we do that. Flex end pushes everything to the right. Center puts everything in the center. And remember, if you have another CSS property, it overrides what's above it. Normally you would delete the top property, but since this is a tutorial, I'm leaving these there for your reference. We can also use space between to put the extra space in between the flex box items. Space around puts even spacing on each side of the flex box. This is great for aligning items, but notice that the middle columns have two spaces, so the equivalent of having both of these edges added together. Space evenly splits up the remaining space perfectly evenly across the horizontal axis. These are the different ways that you can position the flex box items on the horizontal axis. Now let's talk about the vertical axis. For the vertical axis or the cross axis, we use the align items property. The default is stretch. Align items center really shows off the power of Flexbox. Before Flexbox, this was very difficult to do in CSS and HTML. Now it's as simple as typing align items center. If we type align items flex end, everything goes to the bottom and likewise, if we type align items flex start, everything starts at the top. Align items is for a single row or column of items. Right now we do not have multiple rows of items, but we can turn on a new property. Now the items stack on top of each other. If we type flex end, they will be pushed down to the bottom, but notice we don't notice anything that changed. That's because our Flexbox container does not have a height specified. So if we add height to our container, now you can see this flex end property is pushing everything down to the end. We can align the items in the center, space around, space evenly, and space between, the same as justified content. So this is how you align your items vertically. So if you look, we have both properties being applied. Flex start is our last property for align items. And here everything is aligned, flex start. Align content is for all of the content as a group. And here we have space around. There are no other rows, so the space is just given around. If we change the property back to flex end, then notice we still have align items flex start, but the total amount of content is pushed down to the bottom of the flex box container. Let's go ahead and delete all of this styling. Now we are back to our default flex box. And notice because we now have this minimum height, 800 pixels, we have display flex and stretch is the default. So all of these are now stretched to 800 pixels. Let's change the flex direction. Now all the items are arranged in a column. Remember now our justify content and align items are flipped in the horizontal and vertical direction. So if I want to justify the content, normally I would think that is horizontal, but justify content now deals with the vertical. Here, if I add justify content space around, we can see that there is now space around in the vertical way. If I want to center it, I align the items on the main axis, which is now horizontal. And here we now have our items aligned in the center. Let's go back to the default. Now we have our flex items spaced evenly in our Flexbox container. That is all of the styles that we can add to the Flexbox container. We can also add individual styles to the Flexbox items. For example, 
Notice when I move the browser smaller, all of the items shrink. If we don't want one of the items to shrink, we can add a new property. If we add flex shrink zero to the middle item, notice it stays the full 200 pixels wide while the other boxes flex to accommodate its size. We can also add flex grow. Now both of these items are their original size and the flexbox item three has grown to fill in all the remaining space. Here again, we see flexbox two is not allowed to shrink, but flexbox item three is allowed to shrink, but when there is extra space, it will grow to be large. You can put grow and shrink on an item. So now flexbox item three and two are not allowed to shrink. Flexbox two stays the same size because it does not have a grow property. You can add multiple grow properties to your items. Now I have flex grow two on flexbox item one. Look, it is much larger because it has two grow amounts. But flexbox three only has one. Notice that they are not exactly two times the size. The ratio is not exactly that because what happens with Flexbox with Grow is it uses all the extra remaining space. So if I remove the Flex Grow, it's just this remaining space. And these items are already starting at 200 pixels. So if you want them to have a perfect ratio, you have to add one more property. So now Flexbox 1 is exactly two times the size of Flexbox 3 because we tell them both to start at zero. This flex basis is zero. We can change this to a pixel value, a percentage value, or other units as well. Even though they start with 200 pixel width, we say, well, when you're flexing, start at zero. So this is very convenient. Instead of typing flex grow 1, flex basis, flex shrink, you can type it all in one line by typing flex, grow, shrink, basis. Now these properties are in the right order for this shorthand. This does the exact same thing in one line of code and is the recommended way to do it. The final property of Flexbox is the order of the content. Right now the content is displaying in the order it is in the HTML page, but we can change that. Now Flexbox 3 is first, Flexbox item 1 is second, and Flexbox item 2 is third. Even though you can do this, you should not do it unless it is absolutely necessary because it breaks the accessibility of your page. Screen readers will still read the page in the order that the HTML is delivered. This is not the best way to change the visual representation of your content, but no, it is available. The last thing we need to do is initialize our local Git repository and then sync it with our remote GitHub account. Click on source control, then click on initialize repository. Type in a commit message, click the check mark. Now our changes are being tracked in our local repository. To sync it with your remote GitHub account, click the cloud icon at the bottom. It gives us two options. We could publish it to a private repository or we could publish it to a GitHub public repository. This would save us one step in not having to make our repository public before publishing it online. Go to GitHub. Notice now we have four repositories. Click on your most recent repository. Go to the settings of the repository. Scroll down to GitHub pages. Select the master branch. Scroll back down, make sure you click enforce HTTPS. Your site is ready to be published. And once this turns green on page refresh, your site will be online. Here we go. This is our online GitHub page demonstrating the Flexbox container. This is a quick introduction to Flexbox. Flexbox is great for making navigation bars, image galleries, and any other content that you want to change dynamically with the width of your browser. Now that we have an understanding of how Flexbox works, we'll use it to create some real content, a navigation bar for our portfolio website.